Ennui and anguish abound. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Better Than Food Book Reviews. I'm your host, Cliff Sargent. Great to see you as always. Happy Halloween. Let's talk about some French decadence. Oh, yeah. I think last Halloween was Baudelaire, you know, the Fleur de Mal. So this Halloween, I've got something mm, just as strange. Jean Laurent's Monsieur de Bougoulon. This was a gift from Devin, uh, one of the longest viewing fans of the show. And the first person to recognize me in public and say something. Thanks so much, man. Happy Halloween. Jean Laurent was a poet and novelist from the fin de siècle era, an openly gay, scathing literary critic who was challenged to duels by several people, such as the lover of Rimbaud, the poet Paul Verlaine. One of the duels that actually happened was with none other than Marcel Proust. Y'all heard right. Proust initiated the duel, I believe. Interestingly enough, I read from the Marcel Proust Facebook page, uh, it had this really interesting anecdote on it. I don't know, it was, it, I would try to look at the original source, but I couldn't find it. But in this post, it said uh, that his friend, Paul Moran, who wrote a very, very dark transgressive novel that I reviewed a while back called Hecate and Her Dogs. Paul Moran was a friend of Proust. And Paul Moran said about Proust that he was actually a very courageous guy, which I think would be contrary to our image of him as a sort of sickly, feeble, dreaming genius. Apparently he had no problem challenging another guy to a fight with guns. So I guess that says something, doesn't it? So how'd it go down? Well, they both shot and missed. Proust's honor was restored and he wrote what is considered one of the greatest novels of all time. It was funny and telling about, you know, the, the era because it was two very obviously gay men dueling over whether or not one of them was gay. So allow me to introduce the man who almost killed the author of In Search of Lost Time, Jean Laurent. Perhaps that's why he's not as well known. History's vengeance. Yet he survived to some degree, and so that sort of clawing defiance in itself deserves a review, no? This novel's translator, Ava Richter, wrote a terrific afterword that perfectly summed up decadence. Decadence is not about things that are just so refined, so tasteful, but about cultivating a state of mind that will allow an intelligent person to live through this modern age of tedium without committing suicide. Mic drop. Monsieur Bougoulon is a kind of fin de siècle ghost story set in Amsterdam. Dans le port Amsterdam. The Jacques Brel Amsterdam. Two Frenchmen visit the town, and after initially being charmed, they quickly grow bored with the tourist activities, drinking and flannering about. That is, until they meet a Monsieur de Bougoulon. Bougoulon is a strange, rickety, old, ghostly fop. A decadent, decaying dandy in decline. The cover of the book sums it up well. It's interesting because this is a book about a man in search of lost times. That's the whole essence of the thing. It's the most interesting thing for me about the novel. It's also about the idea of hedonic adaptation and the inability to revivify the past, to make it as interesting as it was the first time. Chasing the dragon, basically. And also what happens after you've, uh, <laughs> after you've chased the dragon for too long. Like, essentially what's happened after you've partied too hard and Monsieur Bougoulon has partied in a way that these tourists have not and can only dream of. And sort of the impossibility of beautiful eras or lives lasting forever. It just doesn't happen, you know? It, it's, things are beautiful because they die, right? And the more impossible the love, the more impossible the situation, the, the the more fleeting it is, the more precious, the more valuable, the more exciting, the more beautiful it is. Maybe not more beautiful, maybe just more intense. You can't recreate the novelty of a new experience with the same experience. You grow accustomed, jaded, bored, filled with ennui. The dandy lifestyle is an impossible one, incompatible with the 20th and 21st century. And the costs are too high, mentally and physically. So it's this longing for a life, for a moment in time that is impossible to sustain. That's what makes for a beautiful story and a decadent one. From the same article by Tom Quell, he says, this century of money and gross appetites which Laurent sees approaching on the horizon is no place for the inefficient, unproductive culture embodied by Bougoulin. Yet he remains a specter haunting the European consciousness. But when they meet him, he's full of stories, showing them all kinds of things and telling them all kinds of outrageous anecdotes. 
In an idiosyncratic fashion, he'll show up out of nowhere, and he never pays his bill. The description of Bougrelon is fantastic. He wears a tilted top hat, and uh, his face was made up in powdered white, his bloodshot eyes blackened with charcoal, and his mouth toothless beneath the double comma of his waxed mustache. Like an article by Thomas Quell I've linked to below writes, he acts as the Virgil to their Dante as they descend into the inferno of Amsterdam. The red light district, places full of sailors and prostitutes, museums, bars. He shows them the town. He shows them Bougrelon's Amsterdam. The seedy underside, but the one that means everything to him personally, where he illustrates the ghosts of decadence past through his accounts of previous debaucheries and relationships and strange characters. Very strange characters. Bougrelon's language is hypnotizing. His enthusiasm for these strange objects and things is grotesquely magical. Going on and on about stuff like preserved phallic vegetables. Or telling stories about weird characters, like a woman who has a relationship with a monkey and is murdered by her servant who is jealous of said monkey. And then Bougrelon displays a mirror and says, this was the monkey's mirror. <laughs> Very much in a désessant kind of way from uh, Against Nature, Aure uh by Wiesmont. But Bougrelon is a bit nastier. B Bougrelon is a little, um, he's kind of a rapscallion. I don't know. He's dirtier. Wiesmont is cleaner than Jean Laurent. Laurent doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> I think Laurent is closer to L'Autremont, uh, Maldoror, the Champ de Maldoror. Uh, so if that was up your alley, then Bougrelon will not disappoint, I don't think. I am taking you to the brothel, messieurs, declared the old puppet, but the brothel of memories. There you will submit, and with the sharpest desire to women you will not even see, to a deceptive obsession. I am taking you to the cloakroom of the dead, standing before scraps of fabric, before dresses that will be empty forever, and bodices of nothing, before the old rags of the century and the tatters of dead lovers. I want to get you drunk on the sorrowful opium of what could have been, and what is no more. Things have a life all their own because of what they induce in the mind, and this is what decadence is about. It's crazy. How can you write such fascinating novels about stuff? Because it's the interpretation of stuff and the meanings behind those things. Things. These objects and these... Uh, the concepts within the objects. It gives, it gives so much more meaning to life. Whereas now it's just sort of, I don't know, nobody's impressed by objects. It's such a different time, you know? It's such a different era, um, which is fine. I mean, it's not like we, but it's so, so materialistic, but it's, but it's just this gushing, traumatic materialism, this, this sort of like, you know, feverish materialism where it's like people, people and, and narrators and characters can be like moved to tears and like just have these breakdowns over stuff, over materials, it's, it's just, and the meaning behind them, the poetic meaning or whatever. You know, it's, it's so different. It's so torrid and emotional. But that's exactly what uh, uh, Against Nature by Wiesmont, who was a sort of friend of Jean Laurent, was about. A cacophonous orgy of excessive descriptions of luxurious stuff. But what it means to people can be so interesting when you read it. It says so much about the characters. And it also says so much about us, what we respond to. What moves us like that anymore? Mm. And indeed, it says quite a bit about Monsieur de Bougrelon and Jean Laurent. I mean, we can ascertain that he was quite clearly gay after reading it now. I mean, the title itself is a play on a pejorative term for a gay man, Bougre, which is an archaic term for sodomite. And Jean Laurent was called the ambassador of Sodom. He was also very fond of drugs and particularly ether. So much so, this is a great, macabre Halloween detail, that when his body was excavated in the 80s, it was said to have still smelled of ether. What a guy. You gotta love the French. There's just no culture as defiant, and uh, I love them so much. So in the end, you know, the narrator spots Monsieur de Bougrelon playing in this bar, uh, playing a violin or something, and uh, it's this, it's a far cry, you know, it's like a dive bar or something. It's a far cry from what he said uh, he had to be getting going to go do, you know, when he left these meetings with them, you know, these important things with important people. And no, what he's doing is he's just going and, and being poor and, and, you know, sort of just an old rickety man. And uh, it's this moment where they sort of realize, you know, the curtain drops, the facade disappears, and he's revealed to be what he is. 
um, which is not much. And that's the sad thing about Monsieur de Bougrelon, a man forever living the past glorious days of his debaucherous dandyism. But I'll leave the rest for you to discover. It's not dissimilar to Breton's nausea, which is uh, describing Paris, but it's easy to get lost, at least for me, in the whirlwind of descriptions. And I feel that it demands a more leisurely pace to be spaced out and savored. Maybe even being a little drunk will help, but only if you're of age and not driving, of course. I'm not responsible for anything bad that happens to you because of this review. I wipe my hands clean. But you can't go back, right? And that's the whole idea behind the book. You can't go back. There's no glory days. There's no nothing. There's only now. There's what you experience. You can't chase the dragon. You can't recreate the, you know, more excess is not going to lead to more pleasure. It's just gonna, you're gonna adapt and it's gonna be awful and you're gonna destroy yourself in the process. You gotta live now. You have to adapt to the present. You have to find what that beautiful moment is for this time, for right now. Not back then, forget about then. Forget about all your past. You're not gonna recreate it. it doesn't come back. That's not how this shit works. You can't recreate the experiences you've had. You cannot. You'll never find the same magic. You'll just find disappointment, suicidal disappointment. It's the same thing they mean when they say you can't go home again, which means you should savor it, whatever it is, now, while you still can. And you can extend that to just about everything in life. And that's why Monsieur de Bougrelon by Jean Laurent is better than food, better than the ginger jam in Amsterdam. That's what Monsieur de Bougrelon just loves in the book. He loves the ginger jam. So, who should read it? If you like Baudelaire, Wiesmont, L'Autremont, Rambo, Bataille, any of them, pick this up. It's right up your dark, decadent, slimy alley. Now it's time for the coffee lottery. For those of you who are new, I've been drinking, which is unusual. So this might be a little bit difficult to say. But the coffee lottery is where I take all the names of the patrons on Patreon who have donated $5 or more per video. I place them in this mason jar. I pull out a name for every review and I send that person whose name I pull out a hard copy of the book I'm reviewing, plus a bag of coffee roasted by yours truly. Yes, I roasted myself. It's a blast uh, and it's delicious. And if you'd like to get in on that, you can head over to the description box below and click the link or go to patreon.com forward slash books are better than food and donate $5 or more per video. I really appreciate it, thank you. If you donate one dollar or more, you'll get access to the patron-only reviews. I just uploaded one by Bohumil Kralaval. I can't pronounce it for the life of me, but it's called Too Loud a Solitude. Too Loud a Solitude. It's a great book. You'll also get access to the Better Than Friday newsletter thing that I send out every Friday. And uh, that's just a list of five things that I'm interested in at the time, uh, whether it's music, books in the pipeline, films. Man, isn't it great when your mic just dies in the middle of your shot and you have to shoot days later. Anyways. <laughs> all right, best of luck to all the patrons who have supported the show. Thank you very much. Here we go. Eric. Awesome. Eric's a longtime fan of the show. Thanks a bunch, man. Really appreciate it. I think you're gonna enjoy this one. Happy Halloween. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Please send this to somebody you think would enjoy it. And always remember, bring a book wherever you go. Take care of yourselves and happy Halloween. Ciao.